Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to take a look at how to create the text styling effect that I've used in this ident. So let's make a start on it. So this project is 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of four seconds. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you a number of options, which I think are interesting in their own right. And then I'm going to show you the option that I ended up with, which involved using Pixelmator. So the first thing we could do is we could type our text, center it up, scale it up and adjust the line spacing and the baseline. And then we need to create a small circle. So let's use the circle tool. Draw out a small circle like that, holding down the shift key to make sure it's circular. Let's make the size about five pixels and let's center that up as well. And let's hide our text. And then from this circle, let's make object replicate. So let's switch the shape to image and then use that text as the source. And now what we need to do is we need to crank up the number of columns and crank up the number of rows. So cranking up the number of columns and rows until we get something that sort of fills in the shape. But the problem about this is it's very kind of rough and ready. And it's just kind of like a, a dot matrix type of effect. And we could spend a lot of time finessing the rows and columns and so on, but it's never going to look that good. So let me suggest a different way of doing it. What if we actually had a shape for each letter? That would actually create a much better result. So I'm just going to paste in a whole load of shapes here. Let's turn off these shapes as well. We don't actually need to see those. So coming back to our replicator, we need to switch from shape to geometry. And then we can grab any one of these letters. I'm going to grab that U because it's conveniently situated there. And then we can just crank up the number of points. And this is looking much better. We're getting this nice even distribution of points all the way around. Unfortunately, if I wanted to create motion tutorials like so, I would have to have a path for each letter, uh, which if you were drawing them in motion would be really time consuming. And I'd also just have to adjust the different points for every single letter. So let me show you that. I'm going to duplicate this replicator and let's, for example, grab the S and you'll see the distribution of points is not quite right. So we just need to adjust that until it's better. Actually, let's look at the I. It's an even better example. There you go. The I, that's too many points. So we need to adjust that down. So there's a lot of kind of manual fiddling that we need to do in addition to creating all of these shapes. Now, I actually didn't draw all of these shapes. I actually used Pixelmator to create these paths. And that's actually what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Pixelmator and we're going to do something a little bit different. So here in Pixelmator, I've got a new 1920 1080 project. I'm just going to turn off that background image layer. I'm going to grab the text tool and type my text and I'm just going to center it up. Then what we need to do is with the text selected, we want to convert into shape. And this allows us to style the outline. So let's come over to the this paintbrush thing. Let's turn off the fill because we don't want to fill. And let's click on add style and let's select stroke. And let's just crank up the width to something like seven. And here under this menu here, we can actually select a different type of stroke option. And I'm going to come down and select this dotted version here because that's what we want. Let's zoom in so you can see these dots a bit better. So I'm just going to go with white for the color of this outline. And I might just reduce that down to six. I think that, that pixel width. So if we want to adjust the spacing between the dots, we can come back to this menu here and this gap value and just adjust that. So that's three. This is one, which is too close. So let's go back to two. I think it's going to be good for this. So then what we can do is we can select this and come to file. So that's selecting the layer, file, export, and we can export it as a, not as a motion project, but as a PNG. 
and I'm going to call this text. So back in Motion, I've imported that PNG that we made. And what I'm going to do is delete all that stuff that we previously created. We don't need any of that replicators and text and so on. We're just going to use this PNG. And to this group, I think I'm going to apply the effect that is going to make the look, which is stylize and extrude. So then what we want to do is adjust the back size. And I'm going to go down to something like 0.1. And you'll see we get this nice sort of vanishing point effect. If we wanted to adjust the position of that, we could turn on the overlays with the extrude selected and you can just adjust the position of that sort of back vanishing point. I think the default is not too bad. I might just nudge it down a little bit like that. Now let's actually look at the shading of this. So we want to switch the extrude style from shading to gradient because the shading style just basically uses the color of the, of the front and uses it all the way back and that's a little bit dull. So if we switch to gradient, we can actually pick a different color for the, 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 the extrude. Let's just experiment with some different color in here. Don't want to go overboard. Something like that is quite nice. And I think I'm just going to bring in a background at this point. So here I've added in the background, this manga rays background, and I just did a tutorial on how to do that, which you might want to have a look at because it complements this one. So let's come back to our extrude. And as you see at the back there, it's all gone off to black and we could just remove this black tab and that helps a little bit. But what I'm also going to do is kind of try and play with that back brightness and that's kind of nice. So now, now let's just set up a basic animation for this. I'm going to come to my text and come to something like 12 frames, come to properties, and I'm going to keyframe the Z position. So move it back a little bit, I think, to something like that. So let's go for, I don't know, negative 500. This all depends on the text you're using. I come to the first frame, set that to something like negative 5,000. So then it'll zoom up like that. So our total duration is four seconds. I'm going to come to something like 316 and hit another keyframe. I might just set this value now to zero. So we zoom forward a little bit more throughout the duration. And then in the final frame, I'm going to set this value to 2000. Now you'll see that, that sort of stuttered a bit. And that's because the extrude is not liking the fact that I'm sending this, this huge picture. So what I'm actually going to do is come to the group and I'm going to set it to fixed resolution. And you'll notice we lose a little bit of the edges there, and, but I'm not actually worried about that because I'm going to add something else. So to the group above the extrude, I'm going to add filters, blur and zoom blur. And at my 316 mark there where we started to keyframe the motion. I'm going to set a keyframe for the zoom blur amount and set that to zero. I'm going to come forward to the end and set that amount to something like 48. And then you'll see that we get this nice zoom, zooming effect. And you can see from the loop, that's actually working really rather well. And there's only one other thing I think I want to, want to just play with, and that's to increase the intensity of this brightness as we go along. So I'm going to come to 12 frames on the timeline. I'm going to come to the back brightness, keyframe it, and I'm going to set that value to two. And then I'm going to come to 316. And actually this slider goes beyond the end stop there and we can actually increase it all the way to eight. So let's do that. And then what we get is this nice progressive brightening through the animation. And I think that's kind of add something quite interesting. So anyway, that's the effect. Fairly simple, but I think we've covered some interesting topics along the way. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.